Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this uh, webinar session today. Uh, my name is Sandra, and I am the marketing coordinator at torontojobs.ca. And joining me is Mark Valais. He's a CPA CA, and he is the president of torontojobs.ca. Um, before he starts his uh, his uh, presentation today, he'll go into a little bit of detail about himself. Um, but the only other thing I wanted to add just before he starts is uh, we will be taking questions at the end of the webinar. There's a little box at the bottom of um, the uh, the Zoom screen there, and it's uh, labeled Q&A, so you can post your questions in there. Um, and we're also live on Facebook as well, so if you have any questions, um, you can post it in the chat on Facebook Live too. And uh, Mark will try his best to answer all questions at the end of the webinar, and of course, he'll have his contact information at the end if you want to get in touch with him after the webinar as well. So Mark, I will stop sharing my screen and video and uh, let you carry on with the presentation. And then I'll come back probably about the last, I guess, 10, five minutes of the event. That's great. Well, thanks very much, Sandra. Uh, thanks for organizing and uh, really appreciate all uh, everything you're doing. Uh, and welcome everybody uh, for our uh, Zoom uh, live and for our Facebook live group as well. So uh, Looking forward to the session. Uh, we've packed it into about a half an hour. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information here, so I'm happy that you're able to join. And uh, would like to uh, would love to hear from you. Would love to hear some questions, uh, comments that you have. Uh, we're talking about boosting your career in public accounting. So I'm gonna. Uh, talk a little bit more about myself uh, shortly, just to give you a little bit of background as to who I am and uh, what my background is. Uh, we'll talk about the current labor market. Uh, we'll talk about some interesting facts about CPAs and public accounting and what public accounting firms are looking for. And I'm going to share with you my top 10 characteristics of successful public accountants from what I've seen. And then we'll talk about some jobs that we have open uh, in public accounting that we're recruiting for through our, our torontojobs.ca recruitment division. And again, uh, Q&A and uh, yeah, I'll let you know about some upcoming events as well that we're having. So uh, first off, um, we have uh, a little bit about my background. I've been over 25 years in recruitment. I'm a CPA, CA. I did my articling with KPMG. Back then it was uh, Pete Marwick Thorne. And, or Thorner and Winnie, even uh, going back that far, but uh, I'm dating myself. Uh, that was in uh, 1988 to 1992. I went to Prudential Insurance from 1992 to 95 in accounting. And then I got into recruiting in 1995. And uh, I'm also uh, uh, the writer, author of the book uh, called Tales from the Recruiter as well. So you're welcome to grab a copy of that. That's available at talesfromtherecruiter.ca and it's available at all the libraries across the GTA as well. So a little bit about the current labor market as well, just to give you an idea. Uh, after, uh, you know, obviously we've had a, a major uh, bump in the job numbers uh, negatively uh, back after the pandemic hit. We were, as a country, we lost 3 million jobs. We've actually been recovering each month, pretty much, I mean, we've had some bumps and bruises over the last uh, 18, 19, 20 months or so, but uh, in the month of September uh, and October, we had some good uh, job creation and our unemployment rate now stands at 6.7% as a country in Canada. Now, this is uh, much less or much higher than where we were in uh January or February of 2020, where we were just over 5%, but certainly much lower than we were at the 13% level that we saw right after the pandemic as well. Now, Ontario's unemployment rate is 7%, and uh, the province with the lowest unemployment rate is Manitoba at 5.3%. Uh, Toronto's unemployment rate is 8.4%, and that is a drop from the 8.9% that was uh, recorded in uh, September, so uh, that's a nice drop. And Vancouver is 6.2%, uh, just to give you some comparison, and that was 6.7% in September. So we've seen some good job growth and job creation, which is, uh, which is nice to see. A uh, city with the lowest unemployment rate across Canada is Quebec City, Quebec at 3.8% uh, as well. A little bit, uh, just a short snapshot of the U.S. job numbers. The unemployment rate dropped to 4.6% in uh, October, and that was down from 4.8% in September. And the U.S. economy has been definitely coming back uh, quite quickly. Uh, U.S. economy added 530,000 jobs in October, uh, which was up from the 194,000 jobs that the country created in September. 
Uh, now, one other stat, interestingly enough, and I'll probably come back to this uh, as well as we go along, but uh, about 25% of Canadians are working from home right now, uh, remotely in Canada. And in the US, um, uh, quite uh, about half of that is uh, only just over 11% of people are working remotely uh, because of uh, COVID and uh, the pandemic and so on. So uh, it's interesting to see at the peak of the pandemic, there was uh, there were 40% of people, uh, the Canadians that were working from home. So we've uh, certainly come down from there and we'll talk a little bit more about hybrid working and so on as we go along here. Uh, some other interesting facts about CPAs and public accounting. Uh, the list of the largest CPA firms in Canada, number one is Deloitte, uh, number two is KPMG, number three is PwC, and Ernst & Young is number four. So that rounds out the big four, quote unquote. Uh, and then beyond that, the medium-sized firms, uh, uh, Grant Thornton, m and is number six, number seven is BDO, and number eight is Collins Barrow. So, uh, at, and at one point, Back when I was in the in the uh, world of public accounting, there were actually uh, the big eight, and now uh, there's the big four after a number of consolidations and so on. And then, um, what's the size of public accounting and CPAs? There's 217,000 members between provincial and national Canadian accounting organizations uh, that have been unified under the CPA designation. And the, by the way, the merging of the designations, if you didn't know, if you were around at that time, happened in October 2013, and that was when CPA Canada signed an agreement to merge with CGA, or Certified General Accountants Canada, uh, and that occurred on October 1st, 2014, and that was the last completion of the integration of the three uh, national accounting bodies, being the CMA, CGA, and CA, so cert, uh Certified Management Accountant as CMA, Certified Management Accountant, CGA, Certified General Accountant, and CA, Chartered Accountant. So it's been uh, about seven years now since uh, the merger of all those uh, uh, associations took place. So what public accounting firms are looking for? Uh, just a few characteristics and of what we've seen in our recruitment division. So I'm gonna share with you uh, 10 observations of what public accounting firms are looking for. So number one, people who can be flexible, uh, working from home, I, I, or working from home or the office. So uh, some firms are definitely pushing more for people to work in their offices now. Uh, we have uh, one client in particular said, there's no work from home option. We expect the person to be in the office all the time. So. Being flexible can uh, definitely help you in your search and, and in terms of helping you in your career. Now, if you're saying, hey, I, I don't want to work from an office, I want to work full time remote, that's your decision, obviously. But the reality is, is that uh, if you are more open to working in an office or at least a hybrid, you will get more opportunities as well. Uh, number two on my list uh, is uh, people who are motivated to grow. So people who are looking for that opportunity to get to the next level, if you're a staff accountant, go to a senior accountant, senior accountant to manager and up to partner. So a lot of firms, they like someone who's thinking long-term, hey, how do I become a partner in the firm? How long will it take? And these kind of questions, if they come up on interviews are good. And uh, this is your opportunity to, uh, to shine that way. Now, it kind of goes without saying because public accounting is working hard, but people who, who want to work hard. I mean, it's one thing, work-life balance is important, I get it, but in terms of opportunities to grow to the next level within your within public accounting and within your career, definitely people who want to work hard do get the opportunities to advance within the firms. Uh, number four, people who don't make excuses. Uh, hey, I couldn't get it done because of this, or I'm waiting for this information or whatever the case may be. People who don't make excuses generally rise to the top through public accounting firms. Communication, very important. Uh, being uh, Ability to speak clearly, ability to communicate your thoughts, ideas, issues. So communication, very important. And that's not even just verbally, that's also written, of course. Now, a clean resume. And what I mean by that is uh, uh, someone who has a, a clean resume, easy to read, you don't have to bog it down with too many details, but just something simple and no spelling mistakes, 
uh, no grammatical issues as well. So some uh, having a clean resume is really, really important in your uh, search. Putting the firm ahead of yourself. So more about what you will do for the firm rather than what the firm can or will do for you. Uh, the attitude has really flip-flopped over the years. I mean, I've, I've seen it uh, over the 25 years where uh, when I went through public accounting, it was really the firm kind of dictated what your schedule was, what your social schedule was, what your timing was, and, and you made yourself available to the firm. Then over the years, it, it kind of moved uh, slightly more so in favor of the uh, employee, where the employee kind of dictated, hey, I want to work from home. These are the hours that I want to work. And now it's kind of a, a little bit in the middle because there's, uh, while there's a demand for people, there's no doubt in public accounting and people with experience, the issue is a little bit more uh, evenly balanced in that if somebody wants to grow their career, they have to, uh, you know, really think of the firm and, and, and their work ahead of themselves if they want to grow your career. Now, in terms of other opportunities as well, someone having great references, really important. Make sure your references are, uh, you know who your references are when you're presenting yourself for an opportunity and let the CPA firm know that, hey, here are my references. They, these people will speak very well about my work and what I can do for you. Number nine, positive attitude. And again, I'm just going through my list of top 10 uh, tips that what public accounting firms are looking for. So number uh, nine is really good positive attitude, really being positive about the work, about clients, about the opportunity and presenting that, especially during an interview. And number 10, my on my list, uh, client focus, doing whatever you need to do to help clients of the firm. And at the end of the day, clients pay the bills. So you have to be very understanding of what their role is and customer service. You almost have to be a customer service person uh, in dealing with uh, firms as well. Now, top 10 characteristics of successful public accountants. And so these are uh, characteristics that I've seen over the years of people that have done well that I've seen that I've watched from afar and in, you know, personally in public accounting. So number one is they work hard and they make themselves available, uh, whether, whether that means to clients, uh, internal staff, to partners and so on. So working hard, making themselves available. Number two is they want continuous improvement. They take constructive feedback. Hey, you know, you can do this better. This is an opportunity for you to do this, uh, perhaps take on a new client, but listening to continuous improvement and taking that constructive feedback and making changes. Number three on my list is strong listening and communication skills. Now, I already talked about communication skills orally and verbal, uh, verbal and uh, written, but strong listening, also hearing what the person's saying, hearing what a client's saying, hear, hearing what your uh, employees are saying that are reporting to you or hearing what your manager or partner is saying to you as well. So strong listening and communication skills. Number four is leader. Somebody who's a leadership, somebody who can coach and mentor staff. Definitely not, uh, uh, these are people, uh, people's characteristics who do well in public accounting firms, leaders, coaches, mentors, people that can guide a team and make that team really, really great. And if you think of a sports, if you're into sports, you think of coaches, what it takes to make those coaches uh, great. It, it takes a great team to make a coach great. So, uh, but uh, great coaches give the credit to their team and those people can uh, really lead uh, if you're looking to uh, progress in public accounting. Number five is listening to constructive feedback. Now, I already talked about taking continuous or uh, wanting continuous improvement, but, but listening to also to that constructive feedback, taking it away, digesting it, writing it down and, and revisiting it a day later, a week later, a, a month later, have you improved? How can you, how can you improve in those things? Uh, watching YouTube videos, for example, uh, if someone says, hey, you know, um, you're not giving great feedback. Well, watch a YouTube video, how to give feedback during uh, uh, coaching sessions, for example, with your staff. Number six, knowledge and understanding of accounting systems. I mean, it kind of goes without saying because you, you do really need a good, strong knowledge uh, and understanding of, of systems, especially accounting systems. 
uh, but really taking it to the nth degree, asking questions, learning things, how to get better at learning those accounting systems. And then, of course, not just strong knowledge and understanding of accounting system, but also strong technical accounting and financial background. So always learning, continuous learning, continuous improvement. And I'm going to touch, skip to number 10 just for a second, and I'll come back to number eight, eight and nine on my list, but the desire for continuous learning. So not only doing it, but also a desire to, to learn, a desire to read and looking at industry. So if you're specializing in a certain industry, really knowing that industry really, really well. So number eight is enthusiastic, being enthusiastic about your role, about your uh, experience, uh, about what you can do. And every day having that enthusiasm that will rub off on other employees as well. So again, people that I've, that I've observed who have been successful in public accounting are enthusiastic about the work. And also finally, number nine, I mentioned number 10 already, but so I'm backtracking to number nine, uh, having a strong network. That also helps with your career in public accounting. And from what I've seen, people who have strong networks and they can build that through LinkedIn, through contacts that they made, staying in touch with people really can help people uh, can help you uh, gain opportunities, get opportunities within public accounting, perhaps at other firms. So having a strong network, and that includes recruiters too, including recruiters in your network too. So a little bit about the jobs, uh, some of the jobs that we have at torontojobs.ca in public accounting that we're recruiting for. Uh, generally speaking, we're always looking for uh, people in public accounting, experience in assurance, uh, audit review, tax, uh, notice to reader, uh, bookkeepers, accounting technicians. We're always looking for those kind of people uh, in general across the GTA, across the greater Toronto area. So if you have those kind of skills, if you have that kind of background, by all means, uh, reach out. Uh, you can reach out to me and uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and talk uh, about that. We also have uh, valuations associate positions. We have uh, both manager and senior managers uh, senior manager roles in downtown Toronto. So if you are uh, thinking about getting into business valuations, if you like forensic accounting, perhaps you've taken a CBV course and you think you might want to specialize in that, by all means, reach out to me. Uh, we have lots of opportunities there as well. Um, we also have a financial advisor position. It's a little bit outside the box. It's not in public accounting, but we certainly have uh, an opportunity uh, within that that you can use your financial planning uh, or financial planning knowledge. Uh, perhaps you're, you're strong in uh, tax or personal tax. You like that as, a, as an area. Uh, so we have this financial advisor position. Uh, it can work anywhere in the GTA. So if you're interested in something like that, uh, we also have a controller role accounting services in Richmond Hill. That is a great position. It's not quite public accounting, but that position is as if you're working for a public accounting firm, but there's no audits or reviews or notice to readers. It's mainly uh, helping companies with their uh, books. And then we also have a position in Peterborough, which is uh, an hour and a half, two hours east of Toronto. And that's a senior accountant or accounting manager position as well. So in conclusion, uh, I wanna thank you for your time. If you want to talk about your need, uh, your desire for a position, you're looking for a position, and um, I'm happy to uh, chat with you. We have lots of positions available. Uh, if we can help you out with your career, you're welcome to do that. You can reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn, and uh, you can also uh, email me as well. And my email address is marc.belaiche, so first name, dot last name, at torontojobs.ca as well. And, uh, you know, if you happen to be in a situation where you are a, uh, at a firm and you're actually looking for staff, let us know. We can certainly help you out with that as well. So, you know, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to, uh, uh, to uh, connect with you if there's anything I can help you with. And uh, you can also uh, call me. My phone number is 905-812. 5627 and I'm an extension 2873. That's 905 812 5627 and I'm an extension 2873. I'm happy to talk to you if you're looking for a change 
if you'd like more information about uh, a, uh, an opportunity in public accounting and to grow your career. And uh, we also have a lot of great social media. Uh, we are, as torontojobs.ca, we have uh, lots of great information on our Facebook page. Uh, we have a lot of uh, postings that go up. Uh, we're on, on Twitter as well, uh, as well as LinkedIn and Instagram. And we also have a great uh, YouTube channel as well. And that is, uh, all you have to do is just uh, search uh, torontojobs.ca on YouTube and you'll find our channel. There's literally hundreds of videos on everything from job search to uh, interviewing and resume writing and so on and so forth. Uh, we also have uh, a cool new uh, platform, uh, which is called Gahuza. It's uh, G-U-H-U-Z-A. And uh, you can uh, check it out. It, uh, we have live interviews on there. Uh, you don't have to uh, apply to positions. Our system lets you know when there's a position that comes up. And, um, and uh, you can visit that website and check it out. It's, it's gahuza.com. It's G, like Gordon, U-H-U-Z-A.com, gahuza.com. So we're excited about that. We've been working on that platform for about a year. Uh, we have been in development for most of this year, 2021. And we'd love you to sign up and register. And then our system will let you know when there's a job that's available. So kind of cool stuff. So in saying that, I want to thank you for your time. And uh, I know we have, uh, if you have some questions that you want to ask, feel free to uh, post them in the Q&A uh, section in the chat or either the chat or the Q&A. Happy to uh, let you know about uh, any questions or cover any questions that you might have. And uh, I'm sure Sandra will be uh, coming on uh, shortly as well to uh, see about any questions uh, that came up. So hello, Sandra. Hey. Okay, so um, I'll go through the questions here. Um, so the first question that uh, we have is, what's the best way of working with recruiters? Okay, great question. Uh, so I would really, first off, be honest about what you're looking for, uh, what would make you, perhaps if you're looking, if you're working at a firm right now, what would make you switch to another firm? Uh, maybe there's, uh, uh, it may not always be money. And in fact, most of the time, it's not about money. It's more about opportunity, maybe working with a new, with a new team, maybe what you don't like about where you're at right now, not in a bad way, but just a constructive way. Um, also staying in touch with recruiters. Uh, recruiters like to hear from job seekers, like to know, are you still looking? Or are you not looking? Uh, a lot of times, if you haven't uh, been in touch with a, a recruiter, uh, the recruiter may assume that you're, you found something or you've decided to change your mind about moving uh, to a new position. So stay in touch with them as well. Uh, a lot of times I speak with candidates and they're like, well, I should be, I haven't heard from the recruiter. Well, it's like, have you reached out to the recruiter? So, you know, staying in touch with the recruiter and also making sure that they have your current resume so they can let you know when there's uh, positions that come up. So uh, those are probably three of the, the tips that I would say. There's a lot more about working with recruiters. I think there's a YouTube video on, on our uh, channel uh, about uh, working with recruiters, but those are some quick thoughts. Okay, um, the next question that I have here, um, whoops. Uh, how to start a desert or how to show a designation, what to show on the resume if uh, someone has passed the exams, but they don't have all of their time? Okay, uh, good question. This comes up quite a bit when uh, uh, they passed, uh, but they haven't uh, actually got all their hours or their credits. So uh, what you want to do is you want to uh, put it on the resume that you've um, passed uh, the exam. Uh, you don't obviously want to put your uh, CPA uh, after your name on your resume, but you can certainly put in uh, CPA expected completion 2022, or October 2022, or January 2022, or whatever it is. So definitely put it on there and show when the expected completion date is, when, uh, when somebody can expect. It. Because the other thing too is not only to explain to a recruiter what, or, or, or a, another firm or whatever it is, uh, that you've also passed and that you're waiting for the results, but uh, are waiting to get your hours. But it's also, uh, it will come up when recruiters search uh, resume databases. So uh, they look for keywords, so CPA, for example. So you want to put something on there so at least it comes up on the job search uh, or the uh, resume searches that recruiters will do. 
Sorry, is this after the name after your name that you would yeah. put it? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it uh, after. I've seen it even. So say Mark Belage, and then underneath CPA expected completion. Oh, okay. Okay. And, a certain date. I, I have seen it there. Uh, it's not generally generally ideal. It's usually in the education section, but mm -hmm. I have seen it there where it's a little bit more visible to uh, recruiters. So right there, boom, right in front of, right in, right after the name, uh, the person has uh, highlighted that they are are just waiting for their hours. They've already passed all the exams, but they're waiting for the hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was kind of wondering. It, do you meant like in the education section or like the actual after the name? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, because I, I have seen them both. And uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good okay. Point. Uh, so the other question. Oh, sorry, my screen's getting all weird here. Um, sorry. So the other question I have here is, how do I choose uh, which recruiters to speak with? Uh, yeah. So I mean, uh, obviously, we hope that you would want to work with us at uh, TorontoJobs.ca. We have a great uh, recruiting team. We're always looking for people in public accounting uh, openings. And uh, we're, we have a strong network of CPA firms that we work with. So certainly would love to, uh, for you to work with us. Um, but aside from us, I mean, finding recruiters who specialize in your expertise, it will save you some time. It will save you explanation. Uh, sometimes uh, recruiters who are generalists in nature, they may not understand the nuances of public accounting, for example. Uh, and that's not just for public accounting. It could be for any discipline, it could be sales, uh, uh, human resources, and so on. So finding recruiters who specialize in your expertise will, will, will definitely save you uh, time explaining little nuances, and they'll have a better network of, of contacts, clients. Uh, so, you know, for example, uh, you have a, a heart issue, you go to a heart surgeon, you don't go to a, a generalist to, to specialize on something very, very uh, narrow. If you're you know, if you were in uh, retail or, or customer service and you didn't really care which industry, yeah, fine, go to a, a generalist uh, recruiting firm. That's fine. But for things like this, where you're dealing with um, uh, public accounting, it's a specialized industry. You want to go to people who know what they're what they're talking about as well. OK, so we do only have just a couple minutes left here. Um, do you have anything else that you would just like to add just before we close things out? Well, I just wanted to let everybody know we have some great events coming up Wednesday, December 1st. Uh, the Canadian Virtual Career Fair happens. Mm -hmm. uh, you can visit torontojobs.ca slash news for more information. Uh, we also have uh, job hunting in the time of COVID. That happens on Tuesday, December 7th. And uh, also on uh, Thursday, December 16th, we get into how torontojobs.ca can help you find a job. So a little bit more broader than this webinar, which was more about public accounting, but certainly uh, how torontojobs.ca can help you find a job. That is a great uh, opportunity there. That happens on Thursday, December 16th. So information about all those that I've just mentioned on torontojobs.ca slash news. That's torontojobs.ca slash N-E-W-S. Okay, perfect. Um, so I think that just about wraps everything up here. So um, we do we are recording the webinar, so um, that will be put up onto our YouTube page, Mark. So for those that weren't able to make it, they'll be able to um, go there. And then uh, also because we are on Facebook Live, it'll also be on our TorontoJobs.ca page as well. Excellent. Yeah, okay. and you know if anybody wants to reach out to me, I'm happy to, mm -hmm. to chat with them as well. So thanks, Sandra, for putting this together. I really appreciate your uh, effort. It's awesome. <laughs> you do such a great job. So uh, well, thank thank you well, thank you. well, thanks again for taking the time to present as well. So excellent. Okay, perfect. All thanks. right, thank you everyone. Thanks everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye.